Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a very rare shotgun. But today, we're taking a look at a shotgun that um, I was troll like going on the the APS one of the APS groups on Facebook. And came across this, and I was like, oh my god, that's cool as hell. This is probably like last year. Um, and I really wanted one. But at the time, the prices were quite high on them. And getting it, and you had to order from companies that I hadn't ordered from before. So I was a bit sort of hesitant with it. But uh, just lately, about a month or so ago, I thought, well, let's sod it. Let's just order one. And this is what it came in. Now, I ordered this from Octagon Airsoft. Um, I think it was about... You can get the gun slightly cheaper, but I ordered it... You can get them with different types of shells, and that's going to lead on to the video series that I'm going to be doing very soon. Uh, so you can get them with the APS or the like the Tanaka style shells. And this is the Striker 12. Now this is how it came to me. I did open it just to check because I was see so I was a bit confused um, as to why the, it didn't feel like there was much in the box. It was a small box and it was very light. Um, but let's get this thing out. This is a 12 gauge style shotgun. Um, you can look up the real uh, Striker 12 all over YouTube and the internet. You can go on Wikipedia. Forgotten Weapons covered this. There's loads of people out there that will tell you about the real version of this shotgun, which I'm not going to do today because we're an Airsoft channel. But you can find plenty of information out there and more information on the Striker 12 itself. So yes, I ordered this from Octagon Airsoft. Um, I ordered it. It was supposed to come with a aluminium barrel, like an upgraded barrel. And it was also supposed to come with 12 shells, that's the package that I ordered. This turned up, um, and like I say, I was a bit confused, and it turns out they shipped them in two uh, shipments. I didn't know that, but um, first of all, let's take the shotgun out. You'll see here, now originally when people were buying these, they were shipping with orange furniture. It was something to do with gel blasters and the way that it was marketed, I'm not too sure. I think they used to come in like a metal tin. Um, However, I haven't got a dye it, I haven't got a paint it or anything like that because this one came already in the black colour. So we'll pull Striker 12 in here. That's literally how it was boxed. The only thing that was round it was a bit of a plastic, a bit of a plastic bag, which uh, wasn't really doing much, but you can already tell it looks so much better than the orange variant on the box. Now, this is a drum fed 12 gauge shotgun, or you know, in the airsoft world, it takes shotgun shells which are loaded in the back here, we'll get into that in just a moment. It's very short, it's not long at all. It's about the same size as an MP5-ish. Um, and, you know, considering that this gun has a lot of steel parts on it, it's not heavy at all. So that's gonna be a plus because of the way that I'm gonna be carrying this thing, but we'll get more to that later. Now, the standard one out of the box comes with a plastic barrel, which is translucent like this. But if you order them from certain retailers, in this instance, Octagon Airsoft, um, you do get an aluminium barrel. So let's just unplug this here. To take the barrel out, we just unscrew this end cap. I might be unscrewing the whole barrel there, I think I am. So it's no drama. So the barrel's made up of two sections. We've got the in a most barrel which is usually plastic on these and we also have the outer barrel which is made of steel and it also has the ejector on here as well which is a hand fed ejector to get the shells out now I have heard reports that there is a bit of a gap between the drum and where the shells meet up to the barrel now this looks like it's made to the exact same specification, so what we might do is take this shelf back to 2.5mm, which I've heard on the forums, uh, sorry, the Facebook group, to get a better seal off the shelves. So you'll take that plastic barrel off that comes in the box, you'll put your nice aluminium one on there. There we go. The outer barrel goes over that, it fits onto the receiver. And then we have an end cap which holds it all flush and straight. Let's get that on there. So that will be, if you were ordering one, that will be the only thing you really have to do. So that 
barrel was shipped separately. In that package, which I think was about $530, it is on a special at the moment, $100 off at like $430, $429. They come with smart shells. So in that package, you get six, uh, sorry, 12 smart shells. And to be honest, if you're running APS style shells, which this one is going to run, like I say, you can get it in two different variants. Um, you're going to be running smart shells. The old style shells with the little apparatus where you had to sort of push it down, open the valve, close the valve, push the shell back up, and then release it from the clamp. Um, to me, if you're going to be running APS uh, shotgun shell infrastructure in any type of shotgun, and again, I'll have a full video on this covering this um, because I've been unable to find much video on YouTube regarding this. Um, use the smart shells. These are the uh, normal smart shells and I also have bought a load of the X-Power smart shells as well so I bought these from one of the Hong Kong websites so the only difference with these is they have a slightly bigger internal cavity for the uh, propellant whether you're using HPA or CO2 don't run these on green gas, red gas, black gas the shotguns shells are not going to work properly so the Striker 12, steel barrel, steel stock piece, steel drum, and then you've got an aluminium housing here, which everything goes onto, and then you've got this sort of nylon fiber polymer material. Now these are black. I don't think they're dyed, orange dyed black. I think they are just black uh, pieces, which is nice. We don't want bright orange components, do we? So you get the aluminium barrel, and the 12 shells which come separately. Now what I will say, ordering this from Octagon Airsoft, I, they did not make that clear. So I was freaking out going, well, where's the barrel and where's the shells? You said it came with this stuff and it didn't. And then I found out later that it's uh, the second pass on the post. What I will say is a majority of these smart shells, I don't know whether they've been in storage for a while, um, majority of those are leaking or not working. So um, I was more interested in getting the aluminium barrel. And to be honest, I'm probably gonna run X power shells anyway. So, the stock as you will see me do there, I just press the button and the stock will fold out. This is predominantly going to be a close quarter uh, weapon, so you probably could, and I have seen people using the APS shells get some insane range out of them, using different types of uh, propellant or the shells or the BBs that they're putting in there, different weights. So I'm going to be mostly carrying this for sort of mid to see, uh, short range engagements, say if I'm taking my DMR out. I need something close up, but I want a bit more firepower than a pistol. This is probably something that I'm going to use. But the biggest reason that I bought the Striker 12, and sorry if I'm going off on a tangent here, I not long ago went down a rabbit hole with APS shotguns. Now I've, you know, been a, been a cr accustomed to APS shotguns for a while now. We've been, we used to sell them all the time. But I was watching some guy talk about uh, APS shotguns that I'd stumbled upon on YouTube. I think his uh, YouTube name is Smesh uh, Special Weapons and Plastic. Um, very funny YouTuber, to be honest. And I started watching that, and I went down the rabbit hole with APS stuff, and I started buying shotguns and shells and all kinds of stuff. These shotguns are great, and don't get me wrong, you have to have a deep pocket to sort of invest in this, these platforms. So you have your shells, push the valve back in there, you charge the shell up with uh, CO2 or HPA with the smart shells, you just have to inject it with like a little nozzle that comes that you buy separately, and then you put your BBs in, you cap it off, and basically it fires a little plastic wad um, that propels the BBs down the barrel in a cluster. As they leave the barrel, the wad sort of splits off from the BBs and you get a nice spread. You will get more BBs in the normal smart shells compared to the X-Power, but the X-Power can hold more gas, um, you have a bit bigger propellant chamber, so you should be getting a bit higher velocity with the X Power shells. But you know, if you don't, if you, I've never come across these shotguns before. You do all the work in gassing these up, putting your BBs in, capping the ends, and then that shell is what is going to work. And then all you're doing with the APS shotguns and other shotguns and things that use the same infrastructure is you're basically just carrying a way of, of you know, sort of launching these shells. So. With this little 870 here, you would load a shell in the bottom there. As you rack it, it feeds the shell up, fire the shell, and then as you rack the side back, doing it normally, they eject the shells. 
Now this is great for realism. I've never had so much fun playing with airsoft guns um, that I have with these shell ejection shotguns. It's just something about loading them. You just feel like you're in a movie or something. Um, so they're great fun, but no one wants to be ejecting those expensive shells onto the floor. So you have two options. Option number one, you made a money, you don't care, you go and pick them up later if you want. Um, or you're shooting them in an indoor environment, or perhaps you're doing three gun or something like that, where it's a little bit easier to find them and, and pick them up and do your, do your bits and pieces. Option number two is, apart from sort of ejecting the shells and catching them as they're coming out and putting them in your pocket or your dump pouch, you can get a shell catcher. So you basically fit this little ball bag on the side. As you eject the shells, it catches them in this bag, and then when you're ready, you unzip the bag, take your shells out, and what this stops is them littering all over the floor. And that, to be honest, if you're running like a Remington 870 or an APS shotgun, that is the best thing I think you can do just to make sure you don't damage or lose your shells. But I digress. And the reason why I was so interested in this striker when I saw someone talking about it was it doesn't shell eject. So I was like, right, I can put, this thing holds 12 shells. So I can put 12 shells in, fire all the 12 off, Yes, it encapsulates in there, so they're not going to go uh, shooting all over the place. And to be honest, 12 shells is quite a lot. I mean, that little 870 there holds three. So you've got one in the uh, breech and two in the magazine tube. My longer one, which is a Marine, I think holds about seven or eight. So we're carrying more than a full load in both those shotguns combined anyway. Um, and I've seen a few criticisms of basically saying these things are a bugger to load, but we're going to look at that anyway. Sorry guys, this is going to be a long video, there's a lot of information. Um, so I decided to pick the Striker 12 up. And the great thing about the Striker 12, we open this little door, you'll see a little channel there. And the way this, this magazine works, it's got like a winding system. So I've seen people take a shell and they'll put the shell in and they'll wind it once. And they'll take another shell and they'll put it in and they'll wind it once again. That's great, but honestly, it's not the fastest way to do it with this shotgun. I'll just rotate the drum here and show you. And once you, you're taking the shells back out, um, you can either rotate the drum, or obviously when you pull the trigger, we'll get into that in just a moment, um, it obviously advances the drum as well. The hand ejector here, obviously when the shell's in the right place, you just push that like an old star revolver, and it pops the shells out. Now with the trigger system, as you pull the trigger, it will advance the uh, drum, and then as you pull it further, it will fire the shell. That's obviously in fire at the moment. And let me give you a few winds. So basically, as you're firing, it's like a it's like a semi-automatic, but um, not there's nothing reciprocating. So you fire, 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 and you keep going till you've shot your 12 shells. Now. The interesting thing with this shotgun platform is, when it's in safe, so it won't fire the shell, you can still advance the drum. So the trigger will advance the drum, but you can't fire. Uh, so it basically just blocks the firing pin. So what you do, put a shell in, click it once, and you're not having to go to the front of the shotgun and wind it up each time. You just put it in, press the trigger, Away you go. Eight, nine, ten. I've just done that twice. Why have I done that? Eleven and twelve. So there, we're in safe. We're fully loaded. We'd obviously then close the door. We'd give it a wind before using it because we want it to uh, rotate and feed. You know, feed the next one round. Uh, reliably, uh, we give that a good wind. That's now loaded up with 12 shells. You're in your game, you put it on uh, fire, whether you have the stock in or out, whichever, regardless. Um, fire the shell, fire the shell, and you keep going round. And you can fire them really quick, um, and that's 12 rounds, so it's quite a lot. But the same can happen. So, what I imagine myself will be doing is I'll be firing that 12 rounds. Um, and then I'll get myself into a, a safe area or whatever, whether I'm in a safe zone or whether I'm doing a weekend event and I just get myself out the fray for a little bit. And then what I can do is I can use that push rod and then I'm doing the same advance on the trigger. 
and these will fall out if I do it right. So when you're not in a firefight, you can actually do this pretty quickly, and that's all 12 um, unloaded. And then you obviously you have those in your dump pouch, you take your other 12 ready to go that are already preloaded, and you basically just repeat the process of putting a shell in and clicking to advance the trigger. Um, with this fully wound, it will actually cycle uh, more than enough times to do both. Um, so you can put quite a wind on that spring that's inside the drum. So uh, we'll just test that now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's unloaded. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So not quite enough to do thirty-six, but more than enough to fire them and get them out. And again, what you could then do is fully wind it, do it 12 times to load the shells in, and then you've got another 12, 14 uh, shots on the drum winding to expend those shells. So that's uh, the feeding system of the Striker 12. I hope that's pretty cl pretty clear for you. And in, uh, in my opinion, this is probably gonna be the fastest, safest way to shoot the APS um, shells, whether whatever shells you're using, it doesn't matter because you're not going to lose your shells. You get yourself into a safe environment or a safe zone, take your 12 rounds out, put your next 12 rounds back in. And believe it or not, firing 12 of these things is actually quite an endeavor. Um, 12 shots does last you quite a while. And I think what you've got to remember as well is if you had 12 shots uh, in something like a pistol, it's not really considered a lot, but you're not firing one BB. I mean, the X-Power shells, I think they're firing like a 11 maybe, is it? or six i not, can't quite remember um and in the normal smart shells i think there's like another another round of bb's worth so I'm, I'm not too sure um i'm going to be doing a lot of testing on these shells with different sizes weights and all kinds of good stuff but this is going to be my new cqb style shotgun i will still use my aps shotguns this thing didn't come in this color this has been obviously cerakote took apart cerakoted um and a Magpul OD green and burnt bronze. So if you really want to get your funk on with a shell ejector, I mean, these things are cool. You can breech load them like a real shotgun. And there's nothing cooler than feeding those rounds. And I think this only holds two. Yep, that's correct. So you've got quite a throw on them. And to be honest with you, the Striker 12 is, is not much bigger than it at all. Um, and I would even go to say that it's probably about the same size, if not slightly, slightly lighter than the 870. I don't know if these scales go up to that kind of weight, but let's have a look. Seventeen hundred. Yeah, about half a kilo heavier, um, so 2200 grams versus 1700. But the amount of rounds I'm holding, I'm holding 12 in this to three in that. And uh, that is the Striker 12. So it's a very unusual platform. I wanted to cover it on the channel. Um, and then it kicked off uh, an idea in my head um, of doing an in depth video series about the APS infrastructure. I want to look at the small 870. I want to look at the large 870 I have. I want to do range tests. I want to find out what happens if you put a 0.12s, 0.2s, 2.5s, 3s, 4s. Um, what happens if we put 8 mils in? What happens if we put 4.5 mil uh, BBs in? Of course, I'm not obviously going to use those in a game because I would recommend that if you go into a game, you're only using what the field allows or have a word with the field. But most places I imagine will want 6 mil. But it would be interesting to see both the spread and the sort of distance that you're getting with the different rounds. Um, so we'll be looking at the normal shells, the normal smart shells, I'll be looking at the X power shells, seeing what they can do, um, seeing what kind of distance we've got. If this is something that you guys are interested in, let me know. But I just had to cover this shotgun because it's cool as hell. 
and it's something a little bit different yes you can't just pick this up off the shelf and put bbs in it you have to have the shells as well you can order the shells with them but honestly think this has got to be one of the coolest shotguns and i know the real steel shotgun wasn't meant to be very good um but i honestly think this has got to be one of the coolest shotguns i've ever come across and it's so small and to be honest not that it's, it says two 2200 grams but honestly it doesn't feel like that at all it feels nicely spread out um and we'll see perhaps we should do a bit of uh, fancy cerakote stuff on this and make it something that's not the normal finish what i will say is the finish on the steel and the aluminium parts is very similar so i don't know whether they've painted it or put some kind of coating on it that's similar to, depending on what with no difference of what the material is um like i say they've used steel parts the grips are really comfy even though they look quite small if you just imagine those those shells i mean they're putting out like 11 11 rounds so 11 bbs per shot times 12 this is going to be great fun so i hope you like this striker 12 very unusual but very cool indeed and we'll see you in the next video like I say I want to do a whole in-depth thing about the shells about what's going on what's available because searching for a lot of information it's either not very clear or not very well recorded and uh, a lot of questions that I had about the platform I can't answer through those videos so I need to go do the research find out and then I'll put it on a video for you guys and uh, we'll see you in the next one maybe don't know if this will go out before the trace video, but if it's before or after, never mind. Hope you uh, like the channel. Hope you like the Striker 12. Very unusual indeed. And uh, why not stick around, guys? Subscribe, put a comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.